Welcome back to the last segment for this year and perhaps forever for you decide 2007. Thanks very much for being with us as an audience. Uh, what we do at this part of the segment is we look at the pollsters and how they've measured the audience across Australia. Uh, so we'll just cross and uh, have a look at Newspoll and Roy Morgan for the last time. We'll ask Warwick to uh, just to explain those polls in the first place. Warwick, it looks to me like there really was a closing of the gap between the parties. Well, certainly a possibility of that. Obviously the movement involves a bit of noise, sampling error, non-sampling error, but over the long run, taken over say 12 months, you would say that the polls moved from a, from a position of 60-40 in the early days of the Rudd leadership to the final outcome which was 53-47. So there was a, a progressive convergence in the polls, but it's hard to know exactly how much of that is the noise caused by sampling error and how much of that is an actual reflection of attitudes. And do these polls really matter in a sense? I mean, do people make a decision at the ballot box based on what they think the polls are? Probably not. Um, it certainly helps journalists write about the campaign. It helps them contextualise the campaign and it also helps a whole swathe of politicians and candidates who don't have privy access to internal party polling to understand where things are at and to interpolate national polling results into their local electorates. So for some it'll be a depressing experience and thought yeah. and for others they'll be buoyed by it. But party leaders don't take any notice of these polls for a simple reason and that is that um, they're doing a lot of internal polling of their own. Well I would Karen? argue then that it does affect does the, the vote, not directly, but indirectly, because if media is writing stories on the polls and voters are making decisions on the media, then of course it's affecting it. It's just not having quite a direct effect. So and certainly then you have the whole area of interpretation going right. both ways. So you think it fit into your voting decision? Um, well, the media fed into my voting decision. And so therefore I would have to say yes, I don't think you can escape it. It indirectly influences votes via the medium of the media, which is why you see a lot of policy announcements made on the Thursday and Friday before news poll polled throughout the entire 12 months. Most of those announcements incidentally and media events came from the Labor side, which was to drive up news coverage over the course of a news poll polling period, hmm. knowing that it would then be reflected in the write-up on Monday and Tuesday. Okay, well, let's now talk about the internet because this is partly an internet um, program uh, and there was more action, I think, on the internet this time around than previously and, Dale, you've um, got well, some Well, I, I like the emergence of GetUp. I thought, you know, I hardly ever checked them out without having a giggle and I loved their, you know, ads. I thought they were such spoofs but they weren't so clever that half the population wouldn't understand them. So I, I thought that was really good and I think that they're... Um, non-party background ostensibly. Ostensibly, ostensibly I think it's probably yes, the word. Yes, but that, you know, Anyone you didn't but have Howard, to be a party, party member to, to be um, involved in it. I think it generated a lot of enthusiasm for actually get up and do something. And I think that's going to be far more significant in the future that there will be not necessarily just one, but many, like Get Up and, and raising money online and doing an ad that's funny. I think that's like the citizen journalism in lots of ways, but it's more about mm. um, campaigning, etc. So I just loved it and thought they did a brilliant job. Ben, what were the highlights of the net for you and the campaign? Uh, well, I thought Crikey's election coverage this time around was fantastic and you know, really timely. Um, the fact they were sending out emails early in the morning for each day. They also did a lot of media monitoring, which I enjoyed, sort of tracking the, uh, the wins and losses and spills and thrills of the campaign. Um, I thought just the general um, rise of the, the blogging community as, as more important commentators as a counterweight to the mainstream media was mm. a, a positive development this election campaign. As a counterweight, how many people are actually reading about the election on the net? An alternative, rather mainstream sites, do you reckon? But a lot of the mainstream sites, like leading in with that, like you know, Sydney Morning Herald website and a lot of the other ones, they have journalists who are doing blogs, and like a lot of mm. people will go and then from the mainstream site will actually go off that and spend. I mean, I certainly did, you know, spend an hour or whatever, being really interested in the comments that people are making and looking at how that reflects. So I think it all sort of they all link in together. 
I think active internet participation is still in its infancy. It's still quarantined to um, very particular segments of our community. Those who have access to broadband have time. But there's going to be a lot more and of them. Th <laughs> and there may well be, so long as they can get decent broadband. Um, but what we are seeing, though, are political parties struggling with the internet as a communication tool and device. And cle the clear winner um, out of this campaign was the Kevin 07 campaign as far as that. being able to harness the internet and understand okay. the tone of the internet and mm. how it differed right. from the mainstream definitely, media. Okay, definitely. well, I think that's just about it from us. Uh, there's just one acknowledgement that we have to make, and that's that... Uh, in the last program, we all made a prediction as to how Labor was going to do. And the winner was Dr John Harrison, and he's not on our panel tonight to collect, uh, but uh, he predicted 20 seats, and that's pretty close to where the election ended up being, because you certainly decided decisively, and thanks for being with us for the trip, and uh, maybe we'll find an opportunity uh, in another election and another time in the same galaxy, though, uh, to do the same thing again. Thanks very much.